Shalom, this is Yeni Yahoo. I'm doing this video response because I want to actually uh, give you a treat. Uh, I want to be able to um, to show you, uh, perhaps for the first time in your life, someone who has a religion who is logical and rational. And I understand, I realize that you believe that... Um, Having a religion in itself is illogical and irrational. But despite your belief on that, at the very least, I think after, if you were to see these videos that I make in response to you, that, um, that I'm one of the most logical people who does, in fact, have a religion. So maybe that doesn't mean that much to you, but... Um, basically then, what, what it would mean, at least for my, for myself, would be, if I didn't have religion, then I would uh, be completely logical, because that would be the only thing, uh, that would make me illogical. So, anyways, enough about that, because you can see for yourself. So, I'm... I'm analyzing this first video that you made on your channel, your very first one. And, uh, you see, many people don't realize this, but you actually make a lot of good points in a lot of your videos. Other times, you don't have a clue about what you're saying, because, you wanna know why? You're criticizing a false religion, okay? You're not criticizing what's actually, what was actually said, you're claiming what a false religion claims. So, allow me to explain a little bit further. So, you have the religion of the Bible, right? Thousands of years ago. Then you have the religion of Christianity, which is not the religion of the Bible, okay? So, you can't compare the two. There's, there's no way. Uh, anyone who honestly analyzes the Bible can tell that Christianity is not of the faith of the Bible. They don't have the same religion that the Bible teaches, okay? It's absurd. So, you're criticizing a, a religion that doesn't believe in its religious text, okay? So, that right there, you're... So, a lot of your... A lot of your claims, I agree. I mean, a lot of the things you uh, talk about, I agree. In the sense that you're condemning their religion. But you're not condemning the Bible, you're condemning their religion, okay? So, so now I'm gonna discuss your this first video here. Now, I was watching some of your videos, and I see a lot of your early videos were all about this uh, original sin thing. And that... And that's good, because that original sin, uh, that teaching of Christianity, is one of the most abominable and evil things of that, their religion. Okay? So, and so you probably were very uh, inspired to completely um, insult that idea. And I agree, it's, it's a completely disgusting concept. Alright, so now, you made uh, several list of claims in the video, and all of these Christians believe. So, this is a great, your video is a great video as a, as a rebuke and rejection of their religion. But let me, let me tell you exactly what I believe on these things. And you're gonna see that maybe they're the ones who are not accepting what the Bible says. So let, let's take a look. Okay. Let's see here. Hold on one moment. Okay. Alright, so... So you first, uh, I just want to say, um... So, you talk about how God has saved us from himself. No, he did not save us from himself. 
he saved us from the laws. The laws are above God, just to let you know. Christians would, would never dare say that, but that's true. God is not the all-powerful, highest thing in the universe, okay? He has to submit to laws as well, okay? He has to submit to the laws of logic. He has to submit to the laws of morality, okay? That's the first thing. So, no, he doesn't do all these things to save us from himself. He does it to save us from the things that are necessarily going to happen to us, regardless of what he has to say about it, okay? Now, um, and again, we're sent into hell not by God, we're sent into hell by the laws, okay? The laws, and he didn't create the, the laws, he has to obey these laws. And I know you're going to say to me right away that, well, the Bible doesn't say that. Yeah, actually, it does say that. But even if it didn't, who cares? Because the truth is above the scripture, okay? Logic is superior to whatever text that claims to be scripture. So if you can prove to me that scripture doesn't teach what I'm saying, who cares? It doesn't matter. Because the scripture is much less important than what is actually real, okay? So I, I do believe that the scriptures support what I'm saying, but uh, if they didn't if they didn't support what I was saying, it's not a big deal because the scriptures are in the big scope of things they're a little bit irrelevant, but they're they're important, I believe. But if they're if they're illogical, they're not important, basically. So if you can show me that they're illogical, then they're not any more important to me, and it doesn't really matter, because philosophy and logic is what really matters in life. Alright, so, um, and again, rebellion against his, not him, but against the laws that he has to follow, so do we. So, we punish for our rebellion against nature, our rebellion against logic. Not against God. And, um... Okay. So, then, your, your character in the video asks, Where are these rules of yours? And in the video you say, Well, they wrote a book. Again, wow, he wrote a book. The book... Here's the idea of what the book is supposed to be. Not what Christians say it is, but what it's supposed to be. The book is supposed to be a guide to help benefit us to see what the truth is. Not that it is the truth, that it, the Bible does not create morality, the Bible does not, is not the, the foundation of morality. The Bible was an attempt, it's an attempt, okay, it was an attempt to reveal to us what morality actually is. Did it succeed? Did it do a good job? That's for the discussion. But there is in no way, any logical way, to equate the Bible with morality. At best, the Bible reflects what the truth is, but it's not synonymous with the truth. The Bible isn't the truth. The Bible is at best just a gateway to see the truth that we should be able to see without it. We don't need the Bible. The Bible is here to help us. That's the entire intent. Alright. Um, and again, if it's illogical, it's not going to help us, right? So, the Bible is here for us only if it can be logical. And if it's not, then we need to reject it. Um, and you make another thing, uh, you make another comment in the thing. There's a whole bunch of killing, but it doesn't matter anymore. Actually, everything in the Bible, I believe, does matter. Because I'm not one of those Christians who say the, that the uh, parts of the Bible no longer are for today. The entire Bible is for today. And when you hear me say something like that, someone like me, uh, it might be a little scary to you. Because you know what the Bible teaches, and so do I. So, yes, I do believe the entire Bible is for today. And I think I can prove it with logic. And if I can't, then, well, that's going to be on me, because 
uh, yeah, we need to take responsibility for our own actions, don't we? And our own beliefs. So, um, okay. So uh, then there's a whole idea that the tree causes everyone to go to hell. That's uh, completely absurd. Of course, Christians believe that, but it's not what the Bible teaches, is it? All right. Now, some people claim that Paul teaches it, but if Paul taught it, we'd have to reject his writings as evil, now wouldn't we? Some people have already done that. They've rejected Paul's writings from the Bible. And yet they still believe original sin because of what Paul said. It doesn't make sense, does it? But anyways, so show me in one place in the Bible, outside of Paul's writings, that uh, talks about this whole idea of dying through Adam. You, you won't find it. You're not going to find it. And Paul never taught it, but people think he did. And uh, and if, if he did, then of course we have to reject his writings as illogical. So, yeah, he, he didn't save us from the tree. Because the tree is very, in the broad scheme of things, it's ir irrelevant to why we aren't uh, being saved currently. The reason we're so evil is because of, of our own actions, not because of anyone else's actions, okay? There, there, Adam's sin, that influences our world, but it doesn't make us do anything. And, um, so then there was this idea, um, saved you from the what they did, and of course that's evil again, as we, as, you, as you have shown in your videos, and as I also believe, it's evil to be punished for what someone else has done. And, um, so then the character in your video asks why. Why does this have to be uh, this way? And he says, because that's the rules. Well, no, the rules are, are logical. They have to make sense, and the rules could never be illogical. Yet, that the Christian, their, the Christian claim would require an illogical laws of the universe, which is absurd. Um, okay. So, I'm probably going to have to stop pretty soon, because I wanted to discuss some other things, but it looks like I'm not going to get a chance to do that, because there was just a lot of stuff you said in your video. But, um... I just want to say, though, near the end, you talk about what eternal life is for. And uh, eternal life is not about worshiping God. Life is about cultivating who you are to the fullest you can be. It's about being the best you can be. So it is about cultivating love, cultivating knowledge, and cultivating your power. True love true power and true knowledge is what the meaning of life is, okay? So, it is those three things that make eternal life meaningful and this life meaningful. With you, I think you would even agree, without love, knowledge, and power, everything would be meaningless, in your life at least anyway, and, and I think you could support everyone's lives with that idea, that without those three things, everything has no purpose, even more so. And, um, yeah, so, I guess uh, the last thing I'll have to say in this video, because I'm out of time, pretty much, is, um, okay, um, first of all, he couldn't choose to create us without free will, because we can't exist without free will. It's illogical. We can, if we didn't have free will, we wouldn't exist. That's just what it is. That's, and I can, I can defend that. I'm, I'm aware that just me claiming that doesn't make it true, doesn't prove it. But that's, I, I think I can prove it, but I'm just stating what I believe. And um, faith, I want to talk about faith here. Oh yeah, um, and if we didn't have free will, then it, if God created us somehow without free will, that would be blasphemous to us. Okay, because we are gods. And um, the last thing I want to say is Christians have this disgusting view of what faith is. And true faith is not what Christians claim it is. Faith, according to the dictionary, is not um, without evidence. Okay. 
But um, faith, true faith is confidence with or without evidence. It doesn't require necessarily that you have to have, uh, that you have to have evidence. I mean, it doesn't require that you have to have evidence, and it doesn't require that you don't have to have evidence. But true faith that is good and logical has evidence, and that's the only good faith. All right, thank you, and shalom. Shalom, this is Inayahu. In this video, I would like to offer you a, uh, a different perspective on this issue that you uh, discuss in this second video of yours. Well... First of all, I have to agree with you that uh, this idea that they claim of how we become saved is completely immoral. It's completely disgusting. Um, and first of all, um, not only how we become saved, but why we have to become saved in the first place. It is truly disturbing and evil. So let's, let's go over that again, uh, what it is that they claim which you do address, but I'll just go over it again. Uh, they claim that Ad Adam sinned and Eve, and because they sinned, we are now all sinners, um, no matter what, even if we don't want to be. We have to be sinners because of them. And uh, we deserve to go to hell, even if we've never sinned, because they sinned, so we deserve to go to hell. And that's just truly disgusting. And evil. I mean, the worst it got is uh, with Calvin and uh, Augustine, Saint Augustine, and um, Saint Augustine. Um, you know, and the reformer, the Protestant reformer John Calvin, who they were they were saying that uh, they they were trying to figure out are babies who die going to be going to heaven or hell. Um, and basically they concluded, at least Calvin did, that um, babies that were baptized would go to heaven, but babies that were unbaptized would go to hell. Now that is like the most absurd, illogical thing we, uh, like that have, they have said, but they go right on and teach these kind of doctrines. And... Um, now, most Christians don't believe that about babies. They basically believe that God is, um, they don't believe God is that evil. They just believe he's mostly evil. Only that they don't, or they don't believe he's evil, but, you know, they just believe that he's not so cruel as to punish innocent babies. However, he is so cruel as to punish, um, innocent sinners, basically. Um, and innocent in the sense that, you know, we didn't, according to their belief, we didn't, it wasn't our fault that we're sinners. We're born sinners in their belief system. So, and they also make it so that it's impossible to not sin. They have all these extra commandments, all these extra rules that are absurd. Um, they think that, uh, being attracted to someone is a sin almost all the time they think that but uh it's not the case having thoughts in your head if you don't lust after the person but if you have thoughts about someone it's not a sin there's a difference between temptation and uh and giving into that temptation and there is a difference between um there is a difference between thinking about sex in a way that is pure and in a way that is not pure. So you can you can think about someone and you can think about sex. Uh, but you know you're not supposed to you're not supposed to lust after them. But so they go and try to say that if you think about sex at all, it's a sin. So they have all these extra ridiculous requirements that make in there from what they have yeah, basically we are forced to be sinners because they make everything a sin. But not everything is a sin. They, they even say that uh, uh, talking bad about someone, saying something negative about someone else is a sin. They say judging people is a sin. All these different things um, makes it so that, yeah, we have to be sinners because we are forced to do those things. But nowhere in logic or in the Bible 
does it ever say that we that those things that they claim which are ridiculous are sins it's just they're they're made up rules so yeah i'm with you on on this in your in these videos of yours how christianity is just ridiculous in their belief system but so now i'm gonna i'm gonna address uh first of all uh in this video at least in um discussing the whole issue of how what the true way to receive the atonement is and what really was god's sacrifice saving sacrifice um see i disagree with the rest of christianity on how we become saved and uh what the uh the what the sacrifice truly was okay so so um and you're, you gave the example and you are right on that example that you gave in this video that i'm responding to um into the video that i'm responding to that is uh that example you gave is a perfect description of what they believe they'll deny it but that it's just it's so right on but now let me share with you my perspective and how i understand how what god's sacrifice is okay so imagine a whole bunch of people um when they're born they're given a um a unique Let's say each person when they're born is given a unique um a, a unique garment or a unique cloak okay that they wear all the time now imagine that the world we're living in is so like infested with like nuclear reactions and radiations and things like that that nowhere else can people live except they can live in this mansion, this huge mansion that uh, everyone has to be in. Otherwise, if they leave, they will be exposed to radiation. Uh, well, the leftovers of the radiation or whatever. And they will die immediately. Okay? So if they want to live, they have to be in that mansion. It's a humongous mansion where millions and millions of people can live in. Okay? So remember, this is hypothetical. This hasn't happened as far as I'm aware of. But So we have this humongous mansion. Everyone, as I said, was is born with a unique uh, garment that they, that they wear. Now, let's say that um, now let's have this rule, okay? The uh, the owner of the mansion, the owner of this mansion uh, says basically, look, I know you all want to have a uh, you all want to be buried in the uh, the cemetery of eternal awesomeness, but. Uh, uh, I'm only going to bury you there if you have no holes in your garment, okay? Um, if you, yeah, if you, if you have no holes in your garment. Um, when I find you dead, that is, when you die and you're wearing your cloak still, if you have no holes in your garment, uh, then I, I will bury your body in the amazing cemetery but if your garments that you're wearing does have holes in it then i'm going to uh burn your body because i don't really uh respect bodies that uh that do not have this garment on them okay now again this this analogy is kind of flawed in some ways okay but just work with me here this is the best thing i can come up with on a short notice okay so um so now imagine that uh also that there's no way inside that mansion to uh, sew things there's no way to sew up holes because none there's no uh the master of the house doesn't have a doesn't enable them to do it he doesn't give them any tools that they can use to sew to sew things up so if if their cloak gets ripped then that's it it got ripped and there's nothing they can do about it uh so now imagine that um you know these people are living there and they're doing various things and they they brawl and fight with each other and rip each other's clothes okay so now their clothes are ripped and there's nothing they can do about it okay nothing they can do about it however now we have the master of the house right the master sends his son 
to into that mansion and says, "Okay, look, um, I want to. I want these people to have a a a garment with no holes." Okay. Now, the only way we can do this is that uh, the only way we can do this is uh, basically. This is how we gotta do it. We gotta find. We gotta. We gotta. First, I don't want. <clears throat> I don't want to risk uh, another cloak, a bad cloak thing. Okay, I don't want uh, to risk more hole holes in cloaks. So here's what we need to do. I'm gonna give you a cloak. Okay, you're gonna have this cloak that you wear, and you're gonna go in there, and you're gonna test run this cloak. Test it. I run it. And make it approved. I need I need this to be approved because before I can market it on a uh, on a global aspect. Okay, so so you need to go down there into that mansion, see if it can if, if it can stand uh, if it can last through this mansion. If, and if uh, it can uh, be if you can make it out there without any holes in it. So. Uh, so he goes down, and he has to he has to live inside that mansion. Now, remember, um, he uh, he can't leave the mansion because the entire purpose is to to uh, to approve to accept this cloak, this this cloak uh, design that's going to be applied to all other cloaks that are going to be distributed. So the son. Uh, lives his life in the in the mansion and uh then he dies no one kills him no one does anything but he what first of all he also what he has to do part of the conditions are okay look these people interact with each other all the time so you can't just stay in one corner okay you're gonna you're gonna have to try to to uh, be a part of the mansion the people of the mansion in fact not only that but I'm going to require you to try to stop everybody from uh, from fighting each other and do everything you can to prevent more holes from being broken. So you have to, to from being made, that is. So you need to go to all these people. Go to all these people and uh, tell them, try to get them to stop making holes in their garments. Um, and only if you do that... Will I know, and will it be proven, and will it be accepted, your garment as a acceptable garment to, to reproduce and uh, give to others? So the master goes through and he has to live there his entire life doing all these things. He has to uh, tell them to stop making holes in their garments and things of that nature. He can't seclude himself or whatever. Okay, so then he dies. He's dead now. And his body's there, but his cloak is completely with no holes in it. So they go in, get the body, bury the son. Somehow the son uh, gets resurrected. I guess science, science is, in be is, um, is such at an advanced level that the master is able to scientifically resurrect his son. Okay, So now his son's back. And the father says to him, great news, your, uh, your cloak, you passed it, you made it through, and now we know that this cloak is really strong and uh, will only have holes in it if people intentionally make it have holes in it. So it's basically, it would be their fault. So that's how confident we are in this, this cloak. However, we're running... We only have enough materials so that each and only one person, we can give one cloak to one person and that's it. We cannot give one person multiple coats. And in fact, even if we could, I wouldn't want to because it, if they break a coat again, if they make holes in this new garment again, that shows me that they don't respect my clothes. So I'm not going to give them new clothes if they're going to disrespect my gifts. So this is a one-time gift, that if they desecrate this gift, I'm not going to give them any more gifts. So, <clears throat> so now, the son stands uh, from a sa in a safe distance, 
in the house and says to everyone in the house, he says, whoever wants to uh, be buried in the amazing cemetery rather than get burned completely in their bodies, whoever wants their bodies to be preserved for eternity, then here is a garment that you can wear that does not have holes in it. Because I see you all have holes in your garments. So if you want to, you, you need to, first of all, you need to accept this garment, and then you must never make any new holes in this, gar in this new garment. If you make holes in this new garment, then you have lost your reward, and you will not be buried for eternity in this cemetery, but you will be burned. Uh, so that's, for me, that's how, uh, that, that's what his sacrifice is. And sorry I couldn't explain it in more detail. Uh, so thank you for watching, and shalom. Shalom, this is Eni Yahoo. Uh, in this video, um, you talk about you, the, uh, basically you have the king of the land, or God, um, making the rules. And um, he uh, makes a, an arbitrary rule that has no logic in it. It's purposeless, meaningless, and um, so then he goes on and says, uh, "Look, um, you're gonna die if uh, you don't accept this commandment." Okay. So, so yeah, of course, you know he if he doesn't want to die, right? But this is not true because. You see, the way it works with with, ju with uh, the uh, government system, if you will, is that uh, governments are only legitimate if they're just. Okay, so, and you'll see this in the American American uh, Constitution and government system as well. But it's a fundamental principle of all governments. If a government is unjust then it must be abolished and we have the right to abolish it if we don't want to stand up to it so you know if god had this unjust government then we would just overthrow it because any unjust government does not have the authority over us only just governments have the sufficient authority okay so uh if if god had this type of government where there was no authority i mean he his what he was claiming was absurd and illogical, immoral, then uh, his government absolutely would be illegitimate and we would have to replace it with something better. The good news is that there is a government that is unabolishable, uh, and that is the sole and supreme government, and that is logic. Logic is the supreme government and can never be overthrown. So, uh, and it's the laws of nature, the, the laws of the way things are. They can't be changed. They have to be what they they are, necessarily. So, uh, so that's the flaw in this. Uh, of course, again, this is great, a great uh, condemnation of Christianity, because they may because their God creates all these laws. But you see. That's not how it works. God doesn't make laws. God reveals laws or he lies to us. That's the only two options. He doesn't make laws, okay? So, uh, so just realize that when you're making these kind of videos that it's, that it is indeed rightfully and good to condemn this Christianity that teaches all these warped ideas. But your objections are flawed in that they don't apply on a broader scale. Um, I'm not sure if you were intending it to uh, apply on a broader scale. And if you're not, then that's fine. But um, I think your intention in your videos, if, you, if I remember reading correctly, is that you believe the Bible teaches a certain perspective of the way things are 
and that is what you're that is primarily what you want to uh, go against you want to make videos against the Bible but I think you need to realize that what Christianity teaches and what the Bible teaches is not the same thing and I'm sure you're aware of that but I feel sometimes in your videos that you're equating the two uh, way too much so anyways uh, that's basically all I wanted to say in this video that uh, the God is not the uh, the government system that um, our eternal souls are dependent on. Our eternal souls are dependent on the laws of morality and logic that God has nothing to do with. He can't change those things. He can't make it the way he wants it to be, okay? So that's all I wanted to say in this video. Uh, so thank you for watching and shalom. Shalom, this is Enio here. I'm going to make a statement that, uh, that uh, God also made. And uh, th this is, well, that is that Christians claim God made, that is. In the Bible, you see God saying, I, uh, I love sinners, or basically, you know, God, for God so loved the world that he came to save their sins, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so God, and, you know, love, love your enemies as your, uh, love your neighbors as yourself, and, uh, you know, love your enemies. And then you have other places that says, that has God saying, I hate sinners. I hate the evildoers. So I hate, I love. Likewise, I want to tell you something. I love you. I love you, non-stamp collector. I do. But I also hate you. Okay? So, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Did I just contradict myself? How can I love and hate you? It doesn't make sense. That no, doesn't. Actually, it does make sense. But you are not understanding language. Allow me to share with you uh, what language uh, reveals, okay? I love you. What does that mean? It means I love some things about you, okay? I love parts of you. I love everything good about you. And I hate everything bad about you. So, what's good about you? Uh, I'll, I'll say what's good about you. You exist. You are human. Um, you're a mind. You have rights that you deserve. You have, uh, you have, um, yeah, so you have rights that, uh, you know, human rights and uh, also moral rights that go beyond just the human aspect of it, but you have, you have many things, and, um, and if I, if I'm not, we're not, but if I was your friend, then that's another thing. I would love you for being my friend, right? I love my family, but they're not saved. My family are unbelievers. They're Christians. So, um, I, I love them for being my family, but I hate them for being evil and sinners. And I also hate you for being evil and a sinner. So I hate you for your evil parts, and I love you for your good parts. I love you in that I respect all of the rights that you have. I hate you in that I um, am obligated to hate you. And uh, otherwise, if I don't hate you, then I am disrespecting my own rights. You see, I have the right to hate you, and if I don't hate you, then I'm uh, going against my rights. That is something that I deserve, to hate you. Uh, so, so, clearly, we know that God does indeed hate. As portrayed in the Bible, he does hate. Christians try to say, no, 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 he doesn't hate. No, no, he does. He even claims it over and over again. But he also loves. And it's not a contradiction, because he never says that he loves everything about the person. Only that he loves the good parts, and he hates the bad parts. That's the answer, okay? It, 
And if you want, if you're going to deny this, then you're being ignorant of language. And I'm aware that you like to pride yourself with uh, a as being an expert, or not necessarily an expert, but a someone more uh, obedient to language than other people. Because I you. You've sent me in private message, and also you say directly on your channel in your description, your channel description, that uh, you're uh, that you you won't accept things, you don't like seeing punctuation that uh, you know, incorrect punctuation as you understand incorrect, that is, um, but uh. But if you knew language, then you would know that saying you hate someone and that you love someone is not contradictory if you are, if the, if the language is implying that you don't hate everything about that person and you don't love everything about that person. Okay. So, um, all those things, uh, all those quotations, yeah, that's, that's done out of hatred. But that is not, none of those things disrespected any of the rights, um, well, actually, I don't remember every quote you made in this clip in this uh, video I'm responding to. So uh, perhaps some of them were uh, portraying a sin. I can't remember, but um, there were some of the quotes though that I do not believe were portraying sin, but were you know uh, describing what God required of the people to do to others. Or what he, you know, there was that one that you quoted about Ezekiel, with the angel going out and killing everybody. That I support. And why? Because it didn't violate any of their rights. There was no rights violated. Okay. So, uh, hate everything bad about someone, hate everything bad about something, love everything bad about someone, and love everything, excuse me, love everything good about someone. And, uh, love everything good about something that so um th that's all i have to say i guess about uh the love and hate of um the love and hate uh relationship and how it's not a contradictory so uh, thank you for watching and shalom shalom this is Inuyahu. in this video i'm going to discuss your uh once again this is a language issue Okay, it's a language issue. Atheism. What do we define as atheism? I'm sure you're aware that atheism has a very broad definition. Okay, so the confusion in this thing about atheism is that there are different sources which list different definitions or meanings of words. So what, what is, this is what one dictionary says about atheism. Atheism. The dis disbelief in or denial of the existence of God or gods. And another one, the doctrine that there is no God or gods. Now, what's a doctrine? A doctrine is a teaching. Okay, it's something that you're making explicit. That's a doctrine. And the disbelief in or denial of. Again, denial. That is something active. You are denying something. And let's see what the disbelief is. Refusal or reluctance to believe. It's an active choice to not believe something. You're actively acknowledging that you don't believe in something. Whereas an atheist that you're talking about who just is just the absence of a belief in God. I, I haven't seen that definition anywhere. I don't see a definition of absence of belief in God. Rather, it's a re, uh, a rejection of a belief in God. So it's it's a it's an informed rejection of the belief that there is a God. Okay? That's what atheism is. Atheism is is not absence of a belief in God. It's not an absence of that belief. It is a rejection of it. According to these definitions, there might be some other definitions that uh, that do in fact have uh, 
the definition you're talking about. But um, at any rate, so I'm going to keep going. Um, now, also, religion, right? What's a religion? Let's look at the religion. Religion. Belief in and reverence for a supernatural power or powers regarded as creator and governor of the universe. Um, okay, yeah, so basically everything we see here under the definition of religious cannot apply to an atheist. So atheists do not have a religion. However, they do have belief. Okay, what is a belief? Again, I told you, atheism is not, as is defined in the dictionaries, maybe you have a different dictionary, the atheism is not defined as absence of belief, but a rejection of the belief. So it's a belief that the belief in God is wrong, is illogical. Okay, belief, we're defining belief right here. Um, a principle, proposition, idea, etc., accepted as true. Do you accept as true that there is no God? Then you believe that there is no God, according to the dictionary. Okay? We're at this one. Here's another definition of uh, belief. Mental acceptance of and conviction in the truth, actuality, or validity of something. Are you, uh, are you, have you mentally accepted and have you been mentally convicted in the truth, actuality, and validity of atheism? If you have, that's a belief, according to the dictionary. Uh, so that right there, that's something you need to realize, that you do indeed have a belief. And now, let's define faith. Let's define faith, okay? Because faith is closely related to belief, as we are aware. So, there are several things under faith. Here's the one that I absolutely detest. I hate it because it's ridiculous. Belief that does not rest on logical proof or mater material evidence. That's the one that you usually associate faith with. Isn't that so? And now let's hear another one. Loyalty to a person or thing. Allegiance. If you're loyal to uh, someone you trust, who deserves to be trusted, is that uh, illogical? No. Okay. All right, and what about this one? Here's a faith. A set of principles or beliefs. Do you have a set of principles that you live by? Philosophical principles. Yes, you do. And that is okay. That's not illogical. It's, it's logical to have principles that you live by. All right. And now, here's the best definition. Confident belief in the truth, value, or trustworthiness of a person, idea, or thing. So, in other words, faith truly means confidence with or without evidence. But you're trying to define faith as, con as Christians do. Faith without evidence. But that's never the dictionary, linguistic study. You know, just look at the language and you'll see that uh, faith does not mean belief without evidence it just it's just belief confident belief regardless of if there's evidence or not so the only good faith only logical faith that faith that we should accept is faith based on evidence faith not based on evidence or in other words blind faith is evil and illogical so uh i want to say that and also you talk about uh in your in your video that uh how many gods exist and uh you just you know, I, i've heard a lot of atheists just just say uh i just go one step further one god further but um for me actually it goes a little differently i'm the exact opposite i believe almost every single god of ancient times and modern times do, does in fact exist is real okay so your objection can't really apply to me but I know that you're gonna even think of me even more illogical for believing all these gods exist, but I need you to realize something. What's the definition of a god? To me, I know this might not be to you, but to other people, or to other people, but a god 
in its purest sense, all a God is, is a mind. Anything that's a mind is a God. Okay? And how many minds exist today? There are at least seven billion minds today. So I believe in there are seven billion gods. Or in other words, there are seven billion minds. Okay? So for me, a mind, God, gods are minds. And the one ultimate God above all is a mind above all. So, uh, so there's nothing ridiculous about believing in gods. Rather, it is ridiculous to believe in a god that has no evidence to, to be believed in. If there's nothing to found this belief in a god, in a specific god that is, then it shouldn't be believed. Um, but now I wanted to share something too. Um, Allah, Yahuwah, and other gods of other religions. The Native American Great Spirit, um, and other, you know, some, some in um, the Hindu god in its truest and purest sense, and in other religions. Basically, all, almost all religions worship the same one ultimate god, but other religions add multiple gods that they like to worship. Okay. Um, so, you see, the thing is, we, basically every religion does, in fact, worship the same God. So, uh, it's not a matter of, you know, picking and choosing here. It's just basically uh, whether you're going to believe in other gods, or um, if you're going to believe in just the one supreme God that everybody believes in. So pretty much everybody believes in this one supreme god, but others believe in some extra gods, too. Now, this one supreme god, who knows, maybe that's not the uh, real god. That, that, that god doesn't exist. But everyone thinks so. So it's, you're making it into this thing where basically every religion is so very different from the others. But it's not true. All these religions embrace and share the supreme god. And then these religions differ into whether or not the lower gods should be given any respect or not. Other religions don't give any respect to the gods because they deny these gods exist. But I, I regard all the gods as existing. So uh, that's a little bit of a different perspective for you. To show you that uh, it's not as clear cut as you're making it here. Because, uh, as I said, God, God means mind. And I'm a, I'm a mind, so I'm a god. You're a mind, you're a god. So, okay, so I just proved the existence of a god. Existence of gods. How did I prove it? Because we exist, which I grant as proven. We can discuss that in another video or another discussion if you don't believe we do exist. But assuming we do exist, and then doing that logical uh, transferring of, you know, just la giving it a label a name, so I'm naming minds, giving it the title God. It's a completely, you know, meaningless in any other sense. God. So, the name is being applied to minds. Minds exist, and minds I'm calling gods. Therefore, gods exist. Because minds exist. So, uh, if you want to define God differently, be my guest. But that's not how I define God. So, um, a god. So, Anyway, that's just a little bit of a different perspective for you, and um, you're probably not going to watch too many of my videos. But if you do, that's great, and I, I hope you leave a comment or something. And anyways, uh, so anyone else who watched this, thank you, and shalom. Shalom, this is Enio, and I would like to uh, discuss in this video uh, the flaw in your suggestion. Now, first of all, I'm going to uh, first of all state that uh, the Bible, as you understand it, is not God's word. It's not the Bible. That's only a small fraction, very small portion of the entirety of God's word. Many books of the Bible were rejected by Christianity, which are indeed God's word. When you take all of God's word, it reveals a much greater picture and shows 
other things that have been missed. So, what does it say in some extra, quote-unquote, extra books that were rejected out of the Bible? I accept these books as scripture, by the way. So, here we go. I'm going to read this. It reads as follows. From the book of Jubilees, chapter 4, verse 15. And he called his name Jared. For in his days the angels of the Lord descended on the earth, those who are named the Watchers, that they should instruct the children of men, and that they should do judgment and uprightness on the earth. Well, there you have it. In your video, you suggested that, you know, you had the angels saying, we should reveal knowledge to humans. The Book of Jubilees has angels revealing knowledge to humans to help them. And what happened? They became so corrupt and so evil that they had to be wiped out in a flood in just 1300 years after he created them. Okay. They taught angels, according to the Book of Jubilees, the angels taught humanity all these amazing sciences. This is what the Book of Jubilees and other books of Scripture claim. Book of Enoch, which is Scripture. Book of Jubilees, which is Scripture. In some of the books, you know, um, and in the Book of Genesis and the uh, Second Peter, it talks about how the angels came down and had sex with humans and other creatures. The angels revealed all these divine things to humans. And what happened? The humans went around and rebelled and sinned. And they sinned greater than they had ever sinned before. More evil was caused by this knowledge that they gave them. So, you say that uh, this knowledge... You know, the, 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 you're, you portray the angels here as this you know, amazing um, re, you know, concept. Um, but God already did it. He already sent angels to teach us things and th that plan completely backfired uh, we all turned out more evil than ever before we all as in humanity as a whole not every single human but col um, collectively speaking our race became a complete disaster because of the angels revealing us these scientific truths so uh, now I, I realize that this, that's what the Book of Jubilees claims. So it's just a book, right? It's just a book that claims it. So maybe, you know, we can't just say just because Jubilees claims it and Enoch claims it that that proves that uh, it's not a good idea. But um, think about it for a moment. If God were to intervene in such a way that you suggest, isn't it likely that people will still reject the truth and still be evil. How many people who are Christians re reject the undeniable truth that logic presents to them? Nearly all of them. They cling to what they believe in. So difficult and nothing can change their mind. Almost nothing. Um, you find the same thing with the, uh, first of all, miracles are not impressive. They're the reason is, uh, so let's say I hear that, um, okay, basically in the Bible, certain people who are evil and not of God have done miracles. So how do we know this miracle is from God? And, uh, we, we have no knowledge of that. We have no knowledge. So if God does something, and you know, I've heard before, and I believe this for myself, that if someone came down and said, I am God, I would just basically say, you know, or at least other people would say, I just hallucinated there. I didn't actually see it. You know, there, most of the world would reject something like that. So I, I think your, your, your idea, while noble in some respects, is uh, unfeasible or infeasible. Yeah, I forget what, how you say it. But anyways, it's impractical, impossible to to use for any benefit. Um, so, 
that's the I guess all I have to say in this video. Basically, that um, according to the Bible, according to Scripture, the books that were rejected from Scripture, but should be there, God already did that. He already gave them all this knowledge, and what happened? Um, nothing good. And I'll tell you, this knowledge all that we have today, nothing good has come from it. So much evil continually has come from it. So uh, you don't really understand, do you, that knowledge does not necessarily mean better. I believe that true and pure knowledge is better, but corrupted knowledge is not. And we all have corrupted knowledge. Sure, we have a lot of it. We have a lot of knowledge, but it's very corrupt. So, you know, it was only because of uh, it was only because of scientific advancements that um, mass super super mass murderers were able to uh, be done to such an extent as never before. I've seen other videos of yours where it talks about you know if they had a technology in the past, then they would have done even greater more murders, and I'm sure that's true. But that's just my to further serve my point that all these increases in technology. It's actually causing worse things to happen, not less evil. It's worse because we can't control ourselves with this. We're increasing upon knowledge too quickly. It's going out of control. So uh, that's all I have to say about that topic. Um, so I think maybe you should just rethink your suggestion and consider the possibility that what you say would not have helped at all, but it would have made things even worse as Things are continuing to be made worse every day. Uh, so thank you for watching and shalom.